What's up, guys? It's me, me, the ALE Double X Prince, finally with a movie review for the first time since Star Wars. I want to say, yeah, Star Wars it was the last one. Um, and uh, yeah, I finally got to see Black Panther. I'm sorry I delayed it just because of uh, work and school and other stuff like that. But it's time to talk about Black Panther. Now, before I Usually when I talk about movies, I usually talk about spoilers and stuff. But before I talk about the movie, let me just talk about the big controversy going on. You know, we give shit to DCEU, Star Wars, that they were divisive amongst fans. This movie was a little bit different. So apparently, certain people get offended if you say something bad about the movie just because... Oh, you're racist, you're uh, uh, cruel, and this and that. And then you have that side where, um, and I like getting t talk about these kind of subjects, but I kind of want to talk about them now. But there's certain people, um, African Americans, blacks, whatever you want to call them, who um, will like go like to people of other races, Mexicans. Whites, Asians, they're like, no, you can't watch this movie, get out of here. And if you're that fucking person, go kill yourself. Yes, go fuck yourself, do everything you want, because you people are fucking disgusting. Everybody who, you know, can't take criticism, anybody who thinks they're better than everybody else, you are a shitty human being. Now, with that being said, it's time to finally talk about the movie. This movie was awesome. I loved it. Um, it it does have its problems, so don't be thinking I um uh, I'm gonna give it a, a super positive review because I did have some issues with the movie. Um, but for the most part, this movie I think is top to bottom really great. I give it an A minus nine out of ten. Um, I, yeah, I I'll stay true to that um statement. It's not my favorite of the MCU. There's plenty better. But out of all the out of all the movies I really really like about the MCU, like all the classic of the MCU, I put those, then Black Panther, and then the rest. That's basically it for me. Uh, maybe it's because it's new and I still need to like kind of get into it and see what it. Um, I grow more into it. However, this movie was in fact revolutionary. I mean, there's people have been saying this. You have a full black cast of like some of the biggest names out there. Chadwick Boseman, Michael B. Jordan, Lupita Nyong'o, uh, Danny Gurria, Daniel Kaluuya from Get Out, Forrest Whitaker, um, Angela Bassett. Um, what else you got? You got a pretty good Sterling K. Brown. I mean, shit, that, this is a stacked cast. Um, and basically the movie is about following Civil War. Um, freaking uh, Chadwick Boseman's character, um, forgot his name, uh, T'Challa, oh no, not T'Challa, that's his father's name, oops, du -du 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 -du. anyways, uh, Chadwick Boseman's character, the Black Panther, he is now going to be the king of Wakanda since the death of his father in Captain America Civil War, um, with that said, yeah, um, people... Um, throughout the movie, you kind of get his kind of backstory of, you know, where he is since Civil War and stuff like that. And then at the same time, you got this opening scene where his father, um, kills, um, um, his, um, brother, um, who happens to be the father of your main villain, Killmonger, who, honestly, Killmonger is up there as one of the best villains it's hard to count Loki as a villain now, especially because, you know, they made him so likable that it got to the point that Loki is kind of a good guy already. So it's kind of hard to count him. Vulture did a fantastic job. Michael Keaton. Honestly, if it wasn't for Michael Keaton, the Vulture wouldn't have been as memorable as it was. Then you have this guy, Michael B. Jordan as uh, Eric Killmonger. This is probably one of my favorite ones. Him and Andy Serkis killed it. Um, Andy Serkis was in Age of Ultron for a little bit. And um, if you guys remember that movie, Ultron cuts his arm. So now he has this like super robot, robotic mannequin arm, which is kind of creepy. Especially with the way Andy Serkis acts. This showed that Andy Serkis is not only a great talent 
as a CGI character. You know, we love him as Caesar from Planet of the Apes. Um, and, I mean, we, he's, we didn't like him that much as uh, Snoke. Um, of course, well, we love him in Lord of the Rings too. But anyways, Andy Serkis proved here that he could also be a great actor outside of all the CGI. Um, so basically, throughout this movie, um, people are stealing their stuff, like, their type of technology and weapons, I forget the name of it, but, um, basically, he and a cast of his friends, um, are up to get the people who were in charge of this, like Andy Sergis, who, and then also some of this material is at a museum which was robbed, and, um, that leads to them talking to Martin Freeman, who was um, Everett K. Ross. He was um, he was basically, I think he was an agent of Shield. I'm pretty positive he was. Chances are he is, but he was there for Civil War. But here he met, he had a bigger role, and honestly, this proved that agents could also be good. There's a scene at the end where he basically, you know, he has like fifty percent of lives and fifty percent to like go with um his um. Um, his jet that he's flying and shooting things and then he he was willing to risk his life to shoot it and I thought he was gonna die but he ended up alive and I think it worked to its benefits um, especially with the end credit scene which was weird because the end credit scene actually came out a lot in the trailers originally that scene was gonna be in the trailers a lot it's the one where he talks to the government and stuff that was gonna be in the movie um, but the way the movie ended they wanted to kind of end it like in the you know, they don't want to take away from the moments that we had in this movie. And I think Ryan uh, Johnson did a great job. Now, uh, not Ryan Johnson, uh, Ryan Coogler, the director, who, honestly, back-to-back, -back, he's done some of my favorite work movies. This is my least favorite out, out of the three that he's done, but the other three movies he did were Creed and Fruitvale Station. I mean, you can't not say those movies are horrible. I mean, you know, this one... You know, it definitely shows that Ryan Coogler is stepping a little bit down, but, I mean, I guess this movie at 9 out of 10, you can't go wrong with that. Ryan Coogler still proves that he's one of the best directors today, and it's kind of sad because he's really young. He's like 24 or something, you know, and that's crazy. You know, a guy this young busted his ass off, and he's been, like, on a roll with it. Um, A character that no one likes... Was uh, Forrest Whitaker, and I think he did a great job. I personally love his sacrifice. Basically, when uh, Eric Killmonger wanted to be the king of Wakanda, he takes on Chadwick Boseman, and they're basically fighting. They have this one scene where it explains why that whole thing happens. I'll get to it when I get to it, but, um, anyways, Chadwick Boseman and Michael B. Jordan, they have a fight. It was a brutal fight. First of all, this movie has a lot of blood for, uh, a technically a kids movie even though adults watch this more than kids at this point um so yeah that happens and then um michael b jordan kills chadwick boseman that was insane but before he kills him uh forrest whitaker was like um um hold on sorry about that work um so where was i yeah so, when this big fight happens, if, if of course, the king loses, which is, um, freaking Chadwick Boseman, he loses, and, um, um, he loses his rights to be king, and, sure enough, um, Michael B. Jordan becomes the king, he kills him and Forrest Whitaker, because Forrest Whitaker, when he was younger, he had the chance to save, um, Eric Killmonger's, uh, father, but he didn't, because he was working for T'Challa, and sure enough, he gets pissed off and kills him. That was a big sacrifice. So, um, that really stood out to me. And it was a really touching moment. When you see Michael B. Jordan's backstory, him talking to his father when he was younger. You know, because the potion that turns you into a king, you know, it just kind of remembers, like, the people you lost. And when you saw a uh, freaking... Um, Michael B. Jordan talking to his father. It was such a touchy moment. I actually kind of teared up a little bit. Um, and it's crazy because I thought this was going to be the first MCU movie that just takes itself way too serious. They had its humor, especially with the one character. I keep forgetting the name of the guy. It's played by Winston Duke. Um, 
Yeah. He had like a whole navy or like another side of Wakanda. And they kind of have different beliefs, but basically they both care about this uh, town, um, um, country, I mean. So it came to play with them. Um, um, with um at the end and in the beginning when the, when he fights um uh, Chadwick Boseman the Black Panther um so it kind of came play to that but it was kind of dumb at first um but yeah I, I'm cool with that um so that was mainly all the silly things he wasn't terrible but you know you need their sense of humor every here and there um Stan Lee's cameo okay now I might get in so much show for what I'm about to say or stuff like that but. The whole time I'm thinking, what the hell is the Stan Lee cameo going to be? Because for the most part, I expected the whole movie to be in Wakanda. And I knew they were going to play a couple little parts of um, of um, Paris and stuff like that. Because uh, Michael B. Jordan still hasn't arrived to Wakanda, of course. So I knew they were going to do little parts like that. But I was thinking, what the fuck is the Stan Lee cameo going to be? Because for the most part, this is like um, 90%... Black cast, I'm thinking they're, they're not gonna, and I'm not trying to offend anybody here, but like I was thinking, I was like, they're not gonna blackface Stan Lee. No, his cameo, he was in a casino after Chadwick Boseman won. He just takes his credit, like, yeah, I'll stand here and, and I'll play. And I was like, kind of laughing because I was like, I remember the, the whole audience I was at, everybody was like, oh, it was actually kind of funny, but I don't know. But yeah, that happened. Um, let's see. I guess we could talk about some of the negatives. Um, so here it is. Um, we had a great cast. So Lupita Nyong'o's character, uh, Danny Gurria's character was awesome. Probably my favorite one. Uh, his mom was also awesome. Played by her name was Ramona. Played by Angela Bassett. Andy Serkis was awesome. Again, Michael B. Jordan, one of the best villains out there. Everybody was awesome, except for one guy. Yeah, that was Chadwick Boseman as the Black Panther. The Black Panther was my least favorite part about the whole movie. That's a, a big negative. Um, don't get me wrong, he was awesome. I mean, he, the stuff that he did was great, but I don't know. You had such a big um, characters that... And honestly, this is more of a great like power feeling movie like it didn't rub it down your throat like you had some strong women characters um in this movie and that's what made it great for me Chadwick Boseman I mean again I like the guy I like him in Captain America Civil War but I don't know I just didn't dig him as much as everybody else in this movie heck when they, they kill him off there's a scene there's a part where like it's just basically like a mini revolution of his friends, um, kind of like uh, trying to stop um, freaking Killmonger after him become the king. And also, I gotta give a lot of credit for Eric Kumar. Sorry, I'm going all over the place, but um, they were gonna make that. He's like, "What's all this for? Oh, it's just a setup for the next king." He's like, "No, you better burn all this down." And she's like, no, we can't do that. And then he chokes the girl. And he's like, yeah, when I say something, I mean that shit. That was intense. Um, so, yeah, this was incredible. Um, but, yeah, that's one of the little negatives I got. That there were so many great characters that uh, Chadwick Boseman was kind of like the afterthought. Another negative I have, and this is kind of like a personal thing, but um, when um, he... When both Black Panthers fight at the end, there's a scene where it kind of reminds me of Spider-Man 3, them falling, punching each other. It would look just like that. I don't know. I never dig that personally for me. However, it did its job as far as, you know, getting ready for, of course, the death of uh, Killmonger, which was crazy because Chadwick Boseman was going to let him live. And I was like, oh, okay. Usually when we like a villain, they keep him around like Loki. And then uh, he's like, what's the point of being alive if I'm going to be locked up for the rest of my life? So just bury me. So he takes the knife that he got cut with, takes it off, and he dies. Um, so there's that. Another character I did not like in this movie. Maybe in the sequels he'll get better. Um, Daniel Kaluuya. 
Um's character, yeah. He was kind of like supposed to be Black Panther's best friend, and then he just betrays him just like that. Even though he is um, in a relationship with uh, um, Okoye, um, who was, in fact, one of the best characters out there. I don't know. I feel like if he becomes the next main villain throughout the movie, it was just... it was That would have been much, much better. Because then it, it makes sense. Because the whole point of this Marvel Cinematic Universe is to have the trilogy stand out on their own. Like, that's why Captain America's trilogy succeeded. Because it knew it was part of a bigger universe. But it also stuck to the main story of Captain America. You know, when we had Captain America Civil War, it wasn't... Even though we tend to joke and call it Avengers 2.5, the story mainly stuck to Captain America, um, which was great. So, with that being said, um, yeah, overall, um, this movie was just um, an incredible... Oh, I gotta talk about Andy Serkis. He was, he was fucking funny. Um, when he... And, okay, so w when Killmonger and Andy Serkis um, go at it, Freaking Killmonger kills his girl just to kill um, Andy Serkis, which is insane. So this was just a great, great movie. The only real thing that just gets me about all this is that people just don't know when to, when to fight, when not to fight. There's stories that people are beating up each other just because they shouldn't come or they shouldn't um, do stuff like I know what the fuck these people want. You want this movie to succeed, but only people from your race could go watch it? That makes no fucking sense, first of all. Or you want uh, everybody to like it. Because, like I said, I have its flaw I have flaws, and I know people that didn't like this movie. I won't say their names because this fucking world is insane. I don't know. I just feel like people are just taking this shit too serious. And that's the problem. Because, like, stuff like the feminine, feminism going on and SJWs and Black Lives Matter. You know, I'm Latino. I'm a Mexican. So, you know, usually I should be on, on par with this. And to an extent, I am. I believe that these people are doing great as far as um, expanding um, different uh, races and stuff. But not everything has to be like this. Not everything has to be so corporate. Um, so that's the only issue I have with life. And that kind of doesn't have to do anything with Black Panther. Because also that's another thing that I liked about this movie. It didn't try to be fucking racist. Or talk too much about racist. Basically just an ordinary great spectacle of a movie with a black cast. And that's what things should be done. Like with Wonder Woman we didn't. They didn't completely rub Wonder Woman down our throats that she was a woman. No. You gotta just go with the flow. And make sure, you know, you you just um, tell it like it is. Just go on with the story. And this is why I think they chose the right director, Ryan Coogler. This was just a fantastic movie. Again, 9 out of 10, A-. Um, I'll talk about the end credit scene. And then I'll talk about an announcement I got next. Um... The end credit scenes, again, the first one happened, um, they happened in the trailers. They're basically finally going to share all of their, um, all of their projects and all of their technology to, um, Americans. At first, it made, at first I thought it was stupid. How is it that Black Panther could do all this cool shit, but he couldn't do it in Civil War? That's because he didn't want to share this technology. So that end credit scene helped it, helped that a lot. So, I thought that was brilliant because now they're ready to share something with it. And I think that's the great message about this movie. So, that was a great one. And then, I was thinking, well, there's no connection to the, uh, to Avengers Infinity War. Hell, the last Infinity Stone, we didn't see it in this movie. We predicted it was going to happen, but sure enough, it wasn't. We had Bucky Barnes revitalized. Yes, Bucky is back. Talking to um, uh, Chadwick Boseman's sister, who's played by um, uh, Letitia Wright, who also did a fantastic job in this movie. Um, yeah, she was more of the comic relief, but yeah. Anyways, they they start talking. They they were calling him the White 
Panther or something like that, but I guess that's based on a comic, so maybe he will be that. I don't know fully about that comic, but yeah, Bucky Barnes is back. So, Infinity War, here we come. Alright, now, it's time for my announcement. I kind of announced this in my New Year's resolution, but I wanted to do more retro reviews and more of series like I did with X-Men and the Fast and the Furious franchises. I talked about possibly doing Mission Impossible if I get the time to do it. But one I definitely want to do this year is do the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I want to talk about all the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies I've, saw, I've seen. Well, obviously I've seen all of them, but you know what I'm saying. The ones I haven't reviewed here in this channel. Some I actually might redo, like Avengers Age of Ultron. Because honestly, I wasn't happy with some of the stuff I said. I actually deleted the video, I believe. Um, and I might actually have to redo it. But some I might keep around, like Guardians of the Galaxy 2. My review for that, it's basically strong to what everything I said about that vid that movie. So that will be it. Again, I recommend you guys to go see this movie. But don't let the media get to you. Just watch it because you're a fan. Watch it because you love watching movies. You love the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So watch it for that reason alone. I think this is a fantastic movie and I highly recommend this one for you. Anyways, it's me, me, the ALE, double X Prince. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And until then, I'm out.